Hello, welcome to BioGrade TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Central African Republic Got Independence In the last two decades of the 19th century, Great Britain, Germany, Belgium and France competed among themselves for the control of equatorial Africa. Germany, Belgium and France wanted the region that would eventually become the Central African Republic. The French were the final winners and named it the French Congo and later French Equatorial Africa, sitting its capital at Brazzaville. The French colonies included Ubangishari, which later became the Central African Republic, Gabon, Chad, and the Middle Congo, which became the Republic of the Congo. To avoid paying for the development of its Central African possessions, the French government released large tracts of land to private European companies. It also left these companies to do as they wanted. In return for an annual rent, these firms exploited the land and fully dominated the people. Men and women were forced by company overseers to gather wild rubber, hunt for ivory and animal skins, and work on plantations. This forced labor made the locals unable to cultivate their own fields, leading to food shortages and famine. Also working in new environments, they were exposed to sleeping sickness, new strains of malaria and other diseases, and many deaths were recorded as a result. At the turn of the 20th century, frontiers had been established for the Ubangishari colony by the European powers. Many Africans began to resist French control and the colonial administration had to carry out several military expeditions in the first decade of the century to crush their opposition. Other anti-colonial uprisings also occurred between the second and third decades of the 20th century. The Congo Wara rebellion was one of such. It happened between 1928 and 1931 and was a major though successful anti-colonial uprising in the western and southwestern parts of the colony. After it was successfully suppressed, its leaders were either imprisoned or executed and a large number of Central Africans were forcibly relocated to selected villages where they were under vigilance. The French colonial administration did develop a network of roads and a mobile health system in Ubangishari to combat disease. The Roman Catholic Church also set up schools and medical clinics. The French also engaged the Central Africans in forced labor to increase the cultivation of cotton and coffee as well as of food crops that were supplied to French troops. The locals were also sent to southern Congo to construct the Congo Ocean Railway, which linked Congo to Point Noir. During World War II, French General Charles de Gaulle demanded the residents of the colonial territories to help fight against the Germans, and up to 3,000 men responded from Central Africa. When the war ended, these troops returned to their homeland with a new sense of pride and a national rather than ethnic identity. After the war, de Gaulle also organized the French Union and created new local assemblies which comprised of French colonists and a few Africans. In November 1946, Barthélemy Boganda was elected as the first Central African in the French National Assembly which was in Paris. He defeated three other candidates, including the incumbent, François-Joseph Rest, who had served as the governor-general of French Equatorial Africa. Buganda was a Roman Catholic priest ordained in 1938 as the first Roman Catholic priest from Ubangishari. He later disengaged from the priesthood and formed Mesan, which translates to the social evolution movement of Black Africa. Mesan was quite popular with the villagers and the working class. In 1957, the party gained control of the Territorial Assembly and Buganda became president of the Grand Council of French Equatorial Africa. Also in May of that same year, 
He was appointed vice president of the Ubangishari Government Council. The French governor was still the council's president. Buganda's dream was to have the French territories of Chad, Gabon, Congo and Ubangishari come together as a single nation. But when others rejected the unification plan, Buganda hesitantly agreed to accept the new constitution by France, which covered only Ubangishari as the Central African Republic. So, on the 8th of December 1958, Ubangishari, now called Central African Republic, became an independent member of the French community and Buganda became the Prime Minister. A French governor still existed in the country but became known as the High Commissioner. Buganda was well on his way to becoming the first president of an independent Central African Republic when on the 29th of March 1959, the plane he was traveling in exploded mid-air, killing all on board. On the 13th of August 1960, the Central African Republic gained full independence and David Dako, a cousin of Buganda, who took over the leadership of Mason after Buganda's death, became the country's first president. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.